All right, we're resuming where we left off yesterday. Where did we leave off yesterday? We're talking about the making the 42 journeys in the desert today. Making the 42 journeys in the desert today. Me and you, how do we do it? What do we have to do? So the Rebbe says, explains. This, by the way, what we're learning is a book called Lukuti Torah, and it was written by the first Rebbe of Chabad about 250 years ago. And he explains what exactly happened back then when the Jews traveled in the desert. What, what did they do? Why did they have to make so many journeys? And why does the Torah explain it to us in such detail? I mean, nobody even knows where these places are today. 42 journeys. This is 3,300 years ago. They traveled in the desert. So the Rebbe says, why are the Jews here? What's the purpose of Judaism? Judaism is here to reveal God in the creation. <clears throat> and if you think about it, it's not really so, <clears throat> uh, how do you so, so strange. I mean, everyone has to learn. When you're born, even the greatest, you know, the person who's born with the greatest uh, talents, hidden talents, but nevertheless, he has to learn. He has to learn. He has to learn how musicians have to learn how to play music. They have to have some sort of pup teachers, scientists. Ideally, that's what universities are supposed to be for. That you go to learn. That's what education is for. Education is very important. What is education? That you, you learn. People naturally don't know these things. Maybe they could come. Some people could come to it on their own, but they still they have to learn, right? There's no child, let's say five years old, is automatically a genius, you know, mathematician or whatever. So th that's everything has to be learned. And if you learn, even from learning from experience is also learning, but still you have to learn and you develop as time goes on. Well, that's the way it is in a big way. And perhaps we can even say that the reason that you have to learn, <clears throat> you know, mathematics and how to cook and how to this, you have to, 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 to put on your shoes, tie your shoelaces, you have to learn, right? The reason you have to learn these things is because these are all small examples of true learning. What is true learning? To learn how to love and to fear and to have all the emotions that you have about yourself, to have them for God. Because if, as we've said so many, many times, what God wants is for this world to be a perfect place. Right? Like anything else in music, what's the purpose of music? All well, the instruments, they should be played in the maximum mus musical way, <clears throat> in mathematics, in physics, in medicine, in, in, uh, in sociology, in any, any of the subject that you're dealing with, any topic that you're dealing with, the ideal is, is to perfect it, to be as perfect, perfect as possible. Well, here we have the ultimate topic, right? God put us in the world and he put us in the world in order to learn and to perfect the world. In other words, to take what we learn and use it in the world. What are we supposed to learn? What are we supposed to learn? How to fix up ourselves, how to fix up nature. Uh, just like a musician learns how to fix up dissonance or silence or whatever. And, and the, the, the doctor learns how to fix up health and life. And a lawyer learns how to fix up, a judge learns how to fix up injustice and this. And so also the Jewish people, we're supposed to be here to learn how to fix up reality. And how do we do that? By uh, beginning with ourselves, beginning with ourselves. And, and this self, ourselves, is much infinitely more important than we can possibly imagine. The most important thing to God more important than the angels and the upper worlds and the eons and the whatever it is. The most important thing to God is what every human being does, especially the Jews. And we're Jewish people, we're chosen to tell the whole world this, how important they are to God. So what are we supposed to do? So says the Rebbe, okay, first of all, we have a lot of help. We've got help from God, of course, but we have help from Moses and from Aaron. And Moses and Aaron, they're here. They're the teachers. They come to teach us what God is, how infinitely close God is to us, how infinitely real God is, how infinitely precious God is, how infinitely awesome God is. And this, we, we have to think. 
And this thinking about it, thinking about God, this will, <clears throat> if we're really, really sincere, it can't arouse our hearts. Because we really think God is really creating me, it arouses our heart and we have love. Or we have fear, awe. And that's what the Rebbe is going through now. Seven different emotions, each one composed of six. The Rebbe will explain why seven times six, because each one is seven. There's seven emotions. Why not seven times seven? The Rebbe will explain that. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the job. Almost. Let's see here we go. Ready, ready. Yes, yes. A second. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. There we go, good. All right, so therefore, <clears throat> okay, and therefore, how you call them base laws, that was why there were the 42 journeys, that is in order, let's say, to go out, to go out from Egypt, which is, that's the narrow place, that's like a child goes out of the womb. Well, the Havchan, to transform this world, which the whole world is a big Egypt, it's like a big womb, to transform it, from dark to light. Call as I meet us all of the seven emotions, the pretotean and their details to be Gadula to you, God is the greatness, to you, God. Everything is pointing toward the creator. This aspect of God's kingship, which is that's the word of God which creates the world, will be revealed. His galus or the Esra Maimor is the re revealed God of the 10 utterances that God made when he creates the world. And he's making every instant. In fact, G God is not just making the world every instant. God is making every instant. He's making time as well. So time itself is a creation. So to feel this every moment, how precious and miraculous every instant of our lives is and how eternal it is. And so that means we won't, the world will not be silent anymore. That's what we said before, like a, a sheep is silent when it's sheared. Because it's sheared means you cut off the hairs from the body. The hairs, in this case, we're talking about the life force of the world, when it seems to be separate from the creator. So therefore, the world is quiet. The world is quiet. What does it mean it's quiet? You don't feel any godliness. You can do whatever you want. The opposite of what God wanted. In a the fee because she call me that each and every of the emotions is included from six other emotions, right? Each every, each one of the six emotions, everything in the world has ten sphere identity. Here we're talking about only fixing up the emotional part. There's seven emotions, and each one of them is included with, of six. We'll see in a moment that the reason we only have six is because here we're going from above to below. We're drawing down godliness when they were in the desert. They'd be through Moses and Aaron. They drew godliness down into the world, mostly through Moses. So coming from above to below is only six times seven. We'll learn about that in a moment. Nevertheless, each one is composed of six. Looking of Maso, therefore the journeys that they made in the desert, which that's the prototype of <clears throat> how to work, how to serve God, how to fix up this world, which is a desert. Namely, by fixing ourselves up and thinking about the Creator, that we be embody the Creator in our thought, speech, actions, which the thought, speech, and actions, that's a revelation of our personality, our emotions. So our emotions, if they're given over to God, what's really valuable to us is the Creator and loving the Creator. So then they'll come out that will display honesty and integrity and positiveness and happiness and we'll say good things and we'll do good things and we'll think good things. Those are the garments, the thought, speech, and action. But it all comes from our emotions. That's why it's 42 journeys. Kamo, shame, anabakoach, like the name anabakoach gadula. There's a name of God which is hinted at in a certain poem that we say in our prayers twice a day, whatever. It has seven sentences, and in every sentence there are six words. Hashem and the name, who begins Aliyah. 
this name of the seven emotions, this name, which has the seven lines to it, each line has six, this is an elevation from below to above. Oh, so, so I made a mistake, I'm sorry. The journeys in the desert that was going from below to above. That was the thing of Aaron, going from below to Call him Masot, all of the journeys were by means of Moses and Aaron. Because Moses, we said, who Yehudah, that's the upper unity. And Moses drew down this inspiration to the Jewish people, and Aaron translated it so that it was personal to the Jews, elevated them. Look, and therefore, Nikra Moshe, that's why the name Moses was Moshe. Why did he get this name Moshe? From the water he was drawn, the upper water. He drew things from the upper water from above to below. This is something like sometimes you have a person that, that is inspiring, right? You have a very common uh, musicians that when they play, it's just something else. It just arouses something inside of everybody, very inspiring. And a lot of people write to them that because of you, I became a pianist. pianist. Because of you, I became a violinist. Because of you, I decided to write music. Because of you. It's the same thing with anything. A, a scientist, a doctor, all of a sudden a person sees this person. Oh, he inspired me. Now I know what I want to do. I want to be a basketball player. I want to be. A... Well, Moses inspired every all the Jews to be a Jew. And a Jew is a person that's connected to the creator. He's aware of the creator. He senses the creator. He loves the creator, fears the creator. <clears throat> His, Moses was the example. He inspired everyone, but Moses was not so much, Aaron was more inspiration. Moses' thing was more <clears throat> the feeling that <clears throat> God exists. God is totally in control. God is totally above me. And totally loves me, totally incomprehensible. That's Moses. Moses, everybody, every them got the feeling that God is incomprehensibly great and wonderful, and he loves me, and I don't know what to do about it. It just sort of knocks you out. Like when he, Moses, he brought the Torah down. He was on Mount Sinai. Everybody else was on the bottom of Mount Sinai going up, looking up, and Moses was coming down. That's Moses. Milashin Kimina, Maya Mishisiu, from the water he was drawn, the upper waters. Well, at first glance, why Yitzchakli called him Masui? He should have been called <clears throat> Masui, that he was drawn out of the waters. Masui means he was drawn out, not that he's being drawn out. Lashon Avar, Mao Ma Masa. Masa means he is now being drawn out. Lashon Hove, present. Moshe, the word Moshe means because of the from the water. And it's translated as I drew him out. <clears throat> the, the, the Miriam, when she drew him out, she said, you know, Maya Mashisiu, and Paro's daughter, I mean, Paro's daughter, she drew him out the water. She called him Moshe, you know, Maya Mishisiu. But really the word Moshe is, 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 she gave the reason because of something she did in the past. But this word implies present. How does the name, Moshe, it's also a question how Paro's daughter knew Hebrew. It's another, okay. <clears throat> But nevertheless, Ella, why is Moses' name, Moshe, means that he is being drawn out right now. This is talking about Moses brought down the upper unity of God. It's constantly being drawn down. The Nidla. <clears throat> and the day say, but the, another word for drawn out, bucketed out, Ha'ora poured out. Ha'ora v'hamshacha, this light and this drawing down from, or in so forth, from the infinite light of God, Leos Mamali Kolmim, Vesovi Kolmim, that God will fill all the worlds and surround the worlds. So God created the world for man, and that man is Moses. And Moses was the example to all the Jews, and the Jews are the example for all mankind. But the fact is that man is tremendously, tremendously important to God, to the degree that everything depends on man. Here we saw in the, in the generation of the flood, God said he's not going to make any more world destructions like he did before. But when man became self-destructive, so God said, okay, I'm going to I'm going to drown everyone with a flood. You know, why didn't let him just go on? You know, but God could have just said, okay, you I'm I'm leaving the 
I'm leaving the world. You guys just do whatever you want to. I'm making my, I'm choosing the Martians. The Martians are going to be my people. There's going to be a holy temple in Mars. And I'm leaving you. You guys want to just like a, you know, a bunch of lemmings or something. You're just running around like a bunch of fools. And the, the world is yours, right? That's what he should have done in the time of the flood. What did the guy have to flood the whole world? What does he care about the world? Just the, the God himself also. God himself could have said, listen, I got better things to do than to look at you guys, your debauchery and your stealing and your, your the, what is it, incest and all the things that they did in the generation of the, of the flood. I got better things to do. You just take it away. You just leave, I'm, I'm leaving you alone. Or he could have even done better. He could have said, I'm, I'm stopping creating you. <clears throat> Why did he have to bring a whole flood and it was there for a year and with this? Because God cares about everything in the world. And the reason, for instance, the flood was there for so long was to purify the world. The world is very important to God. Very important to God. Completely incomprehensible. <clears throat> but that's the message of the Jewish people. <clears throat> I think I told you about this before, but someone came to the Rebbe and said, that, you know, is it okay to, to investigate if there's life on Mars? And the Rebbe said, certainly. Even more, it's the obligation of scientists to investigate if there's life on Mars. That's the point of science. To, to discover what is going on in the world, the mechanisms of the world, and to make it so, but even if there is life on Mars, says for sure the Torah was not given there. Right? They aren't the Martians are not the chosen people. like it says, Dala Dala Lanu. That's Moses, that's what Moses' job is. Moshe means constantly drawing out from the upper worlds to bring life into this world because the world was created for man, and Moses was that man, and he wants us to be that man also. The This is only katipa miyom unknes, and what Moses draws down into this world is just like a little tiny drop of reality in this world. Therefore, all of the worlds are negated in God's essence. The mamish kashiv, and they're absolutely like nothing. So, on one hand, this world is infinitely, infinitely important to God, but on the other hand, God creates this world from like a little ray of a ray of a ray of an echo of a, of, a, of a picture of whatever it is of reality. And the, pur the purpose of the Jewish people is to reveal the creator who's infinitely, infinitely, infinitely real into this creation, which is infinitely, 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 <clears throat> how do you say, a copy of reality. A copy of a copy of a copy of reality. Kamala Marshall, for instance, so this whole world, the whole universe is just like made from a, like a little drop of reality. Shahu Agula, just like a little drop, though, which is round. And Kamoke, and similarly, Haora, this ray of godliness which creates the world, is makif as it surrounds the sovevas, all of the worlds. Mikol Tzad from every side. That's why when Jews got the Torah, they got from the essence of God, their souls jumped out of their bodies. It was just too real. Hine Makomiti, like it says, after the Jewish people sinned with the golden calf, so God, Moses said, uh, <clears throat> please forgive them. And God said, okay, come here with me. I'll take you into this cleft of, a, of the mountain. There's a place with me. And then, and then he showed him the 13 attributes of mercy. He says, what does it mean, makom iti? That the whole world, the whole idea of place, this is, <clears throat> so to speak, within God. It's, it's, a, it's misleading to say something like that. But whom makomo shalolam, the God is the place of the world, and the world is not the place where God is. Rakshla, any basar, but just it seems, olam liyesh it just seems that the world is partaking of reality. But in fact, the world is so, so incredibly unreal <clears throat> that we have no conception of how unreal it is. And the purpose of Moses, and through Moses, the Jewish people, and through the Jewish people, the whole world, is to realize bring the creator into the creation to act in this world and to think in the world in a way which pleases the creator that's why the, that's why god made all this business of contractions and concealments so that we should we should do what he wants and that'll reveal the creator and the creation that's even higher than all these levels that we talked about the pleasure that god gets from the world and that's what the thing of moshe the dola dola lano davka that he he, what is it? He, he scooped out for us. Dala Dala Lano, he scooped out for us what, the, what they said with Moses. Uh, uh, he fed the sheep of what was it? <clears throat> of, um, 
he went and he he he, uh, he was a shepherd, right? So he shepherded the shepherd shepherded the sheep. It's the same story with Yaakov also. That he he had said that he rolled off the the stone and he shepherded the sheep, right? The the daughters of Yisro. This is Bechinas Yehudiyeloa. This is the upper unity in Shema Yisrael. When we say that's the motto of Judaism, Shema Yisrael, that God is one, <clears throat> that is referring to the upper unity. What does it mean? We talked about it before yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. The upper unity and the lower unity. Upper unity is looking at the world from God's point of view, and the lower unity is looking at the world, looking at God from our point of view. Sheyesh bo gamke and sheish tevos, Shema Yisrael has six letters in it. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, six letters. And by means of hibunar, by contemplating and thinking deeply into the reality of God, is there really a creator thinking into it? <clears throat> the Yehudi Eloah about this upper unity of God. How God is creating time and God is creating consciousness. So if so, what is God? By thinking about this upper unity, is Yale the Yagiyah, we can reach, we can elevate ourselves and reach to the loving God with all of our hearts. B'shnei Yitzarecha, with all of our hearts, hainu l'skafa l'shapcha, call amidos to transform all of our emotions and all of our personality to God. V'ahavta t'ashem alukecha, that you should love God, your God. So everything you do, everything you see, everything that happens to you and me, it's all being directed by God. And as incomprehensible as this is, by thinking into it, it becomes a little bit comprehensible. In other words, we don't rely so much on our normal expectations. We allow God to surprise us. And we realize that the whole world is just a big surprise. <clears throat> Ahava, that's what the word love means. Love means desire, ava. Shehu bechin is ra'uta deliva, an arousal of the heart. That our desire and our will will be Hashem Elokeinu, that God will be our God. The Bechin is Gilui and revealed, a, a revealed way. Like King David said, I don't want to just be with you. I want there to be only you, God, because that's the fact. Okay, so again, just like the, the, the musician or the scientist or the, the whatever is the professor. He wants to reach the greatest amount of knowledge that he can possibly be and be a good example to everybody. So the Jewish people, they want to reach the greatest level of integration with their creator as possible and be a good example from the world. And that's why they traveled through the desert. They left Egypt. They had to gradually work on the world in order to make it ready for this big revelation. Of course, the big revelation is going to happen in the days of the Mashiach. The Mashiach is going to be like Moses. But man, meanwhile, Moses was showing that it's possible, and not only is it possible, but it's mandatory for every Jew to start thinking about what reality really is. behold, in this love and this great love of godliness, now the Rebbe is going to go through the six emotions, seven emotions, how to fix them up, mainly six emotions. How me and you can fix it up. Ready? We're going to go through the, the journeys, 42 journeys in the desert. Ready? Let's go. He may behold, meet us, Ahava, Vechesed. Let's start off with first the, 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 high, the first emotion, which is love. <clears throat> From love, loving God. We said, come, you come to love God with all of your heart. That's what we said before, right? So now you fixed up a little bit your love for God. <clears throat> that aspect of the desert, you fixed up. In love. And we say kindness, giving. We feel the great love of God to us. We love God with all of our hearts, etc. Okay, step number one. Step number two, emotion number two, you come to also including gvura, <clears throat> power and fear. What do you fear? Yirat hate. The fear of sin. Sheyir lenafsho that you're afraid and your soul shall lully pared not to be separated from God's unity. All your day by means of shum hate by any sin or transgression. Now usually 
right? I've seen in, in car, cars, it used to be written, no fear, no fear. Right? This person who's driving the car, he doesn't believe in any fear. I, I would think, you know, you got to keep away from a person like that because it means that what any second he's just going to drive on the wrong side of the road. No fear. Who knows what he's going to do? Slam on the brakes, right? Turn, turn around, drive in reverse. No fear, right? So fear is a good thing in the proper place. It means that you don't want to go out of your lane. Uh, that's a good thing. You'll get to your destination. What's out of your lane? Uh, that's the idea of a chet, a sin. In Hebrew, the word chet means to, to miss the point, to, to miss the goal. That's what chet, chate, means that you stray off. <clears throat> so so what, what is a sin? A sin means that God tells you what to do and you don't do it. Like God tells you what to do, you don't do it. Just like a human being has a body and there's certain rules of health. And if you don't keep these rules of health, no matter how pleasant it is to you, it's dangerous. You decide you're going to want to, you want to eat only white sugar. Tastes good, feels good, you love it. Only Coca-Cola and white sugar, that's it. That's your diet. And you're the happiest person in the world. You just really love it and right, for a while, but it's not healthy. That's called a chet, that's called, so to speak, a sin. As far as physical health goes, as I said, well, the God also gave in the Torah other things which are unhealthy, they're spiritually unhealthy. There's a spiritual body, that's the Torah. To go outside of it is unhealthy. So you should be afraid of eating improperly. You should be afraid of driving on the wrong side of the street. So, so also you should be even more Afraid, a healthy fear to go against what God wants. A filu israkal, even the slightest transgression shall divram of the rabbis. Because your sins divide between you and God. This is also included in it. Also a third emotion, which is called mercy. By thinking. And to this, it arouses also rachamim rabim, tremendous mercy, al nitzutz elokus, on the spark of godliness, and mechayet nafesh, nafsho, which enlivens your soul. Eich she yorda mata mata, how we came down so low, the igra roma, from such a high place, the soul was so high. Now the Rebbe is talking about mercy. <clears throat> we arouse a feeling of mercy on our souls. So by thinking about God properly, that's the idea of leaving Egypt and receiving the Torah and traveling through the desert, thinking about God, contemplating God. That's what's relevant to us now. Is first of all, you come to love how good God is, how infinitely kind God is. That he's creating me, he's creating the world, he's just giving everything for free. Then after that, you come to fear. Fear is, well, what does God want from me? I mean, is there any rules over here right there's all these other laws of nature how the sun goes how the moon goes how this goes maybe there's laws for of me right and wrong also huh? everything has laws except for my my actions i can do what i want to feel what i want to maybe there's also a law for me also and then that's called fear <clears throat> fear a healthy fear when you find out what god doesn't want that you're afraid that maybe you do it sometimes god doesn't want things that I do want. So I have to force myself. That's called Gvura. Then after that, that's two emotions. Now we have the third emotion, mercy. What's mercy? You arouse mercy on your soul. What? Wow, look where I am. I came from such a high place. My soul is so pure. And look how it is that I've come down so low. The Igra Rama from a high place to a low place. Because Jacob... It says is the rope of God's inheritance. The Jewish people of Yaakov. Yaakov, that's the middle emotion. Abraham is love. Yitzchak is fear. And Yaakov is mercy. Yisrael, Olu B'machshava. Yaakov is also Yisrael. Same person. But after he fought the angel. It says that Yisrael rose up in God's thought. That's where the Jews come from. The essence of the Jews. Look where we are now. 
the yard of this lavish bakuv, the soul comes down into a body, the nefesh and an and an 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 I say an enlivening natural soul. Lead og v'lachshov to worry and to think. The call in your goof only about the body and how to make money and how to give pleasures. Ukanira b'chus like we see clearly. Kasher yishana adam upon a person is asleep as ain lo shum daigos he hasn't got any worries. Because she's or as soon as he wakes up in the morning, all of a sudden he's got these all these worries. Yisoru call a daigos. All of his worries come. That's why a lot of people take drugs. Right? They just don't want to have any connection to the world. Instead of changing themselves and their connection to the world, so they figure, I got to change the world, at least how I can. Right? How am I going to change the world? Take a drug, take part of the world, ingest it inside of me, and all of a sudden, all my problems are gone. Right? All of my problems are gone. Especially these uh, what are opiates and things that are like that. Right, they just take away a person's pleasure, a person's all a person's worries, all a person's this. Right, so what's what's the Rebbe getting at? We're too attached to the world. The world drives us crazy. If if we would just realize that we have power in our soul to sail over all of the problems of the world, and that God will help us in everything that we do and all of the difficulties that there are, if we'll just be <clears throat> honest and ask for his help. <clears throat> so therefore we can float over all these worries, but nevertheless, God put us into the world and he gave us a personality where we feel overwhelmed and justly so the world is so big and there's so many people and so many, we're just bombarded all the time with these challenges and decisions and just enough it's just too much right so therefore a person can get go crazy make up all these crazy you know the the the, the solutions to the problems says the rebbe the, the fact of the matter is is that we have to ask god for mercy because all of these worries and problems etc this is what god wants he wants us to be in a world where there are all these worries and problems and challenges and that we should overcome. That's what the world is about. We should change it. And how do we change it? First of all, by not reacting to the world in a negative way. We should react to the world the way that God wants us to. Like we talked about so many times, Daniel in the lion's den, right? He wasn't worried about, am I going to get eaten? Am I going to think of it? He was just thinking about what does God want? If that's what God wants, I should get eaten. He wasn't worried about what's going to happen. If God wants me to get eaten, I'll get eaten. If not, I won't. Uh, right? But it's not good. He was thinking about the creator. I mean, exactly what he was doing, I can't see because I'm not at that level. And I hope I'll never be thrown into a den, den of lions. But God is throwing us into every human being into a den of lions. Like the belly of the whale. Every, every single one of us. And what are we supposed to do? First of all, ask for mercy. Connect to God. Realize that God is the boss over here. It was not Nebuchadnezzar or whoever that threw him into the the the, 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 the pit. It was God that had him thrown in the pit. Now ask God for mercy. W will he come out? Will he not come out? I don't know. I imagine that a lot of Jews were in the Holocaust and they were you know, thrown into the pits and they cried out to God. And God didn't answer. Okay, you've got questions. I also have a lot of questions. But the fact is, is that God, that's, that doesn't change the, the the method. The method is we have to connect to God, love God, fear God, and have ask God for mercy. This is what's called the Rachel Lifnegozim. This is what's called like Rachel in front of the shearers, She Bikinas and Hashem, the soul. How it is in its essence is pure. This level of the soul is not brought into the body. Or just a little bit of the soul is in the body. And that's what we connect. Our, that's our consciousness. That's us. Like what's the part that, of the soul that we call me, that I call me, that's just a little tiny awareness of what life really is. That's like a little hair from the sheep, so to speak. That by means it shines into the body. I'm 
I'm sorry, she'al yedei she me'ira beguf, that this little ray of the soul shines into the body to keep it alive, this little ray, is that's that's me and that's you. Our life, by means of this, the body darkens it out. Umamik benyani, and you think about this, who am I really? When you think about this, I'm sorry, umam, I'm sorry, umamik benyanim gashmi, that the little ray of the soul is brought into the body, and now it thinks about physical things and it deals with physical things. Harizeu bechines goes in. Therefore, you have sheared the sheep. You've cut off your life source from your <clears throat> from the life that's in your body. The ilazot, if so, a rachmanut gadolam od. The mercy is very great on this spark of godliness which is inside of me, which I call me. That's what it is we request. With your mercy, have mercy on us. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he was put into prison and he was tortured. And he wrote that the, the, the torture that I had there, and they, they, it was, I mean, this, the, the tortures were very, you know, very severe that the Rebbe was, and especially considering who the Rebbe was. The Rebbe was a tremendous you know, a tremendously sensitive scholar, loving Jewish people, tremendous talents he had, tremendous abilities that are just incomprehensible to a human being, a, a king. And he was thrown into the, the worst situation. He was put into a pit that was up to his knees or up to his whatever it is, uh, in, in filth. I guess it must have been excrement. I don't know. And there were rodents and, and spiders and things on the walls. And he couldn't, for two days, he was put there and everything. And he said, the experience that I had, that he was beaten up and he was threatened with death constantly. Death was constant. He says that the, the experience that I had there was terrible, but it's absolutely nothing compared to the experience, the, the torture that the soul has when it's brought into a body. Because the soul, before it's in the body, it's like a king. It's connected to God, pure awareness, pure truth. And it's put into the body. And all of a sudden it's just thinking about, you know, <clears throat> the most, how do you say, mundane and often imaginary things in the world, right? To come with the worries and, and love and 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 the, uh, the connection to things that have absolutely no meaning whatsoever. That's what we say with your great mercy. There, so what? So what do we? What can we do? Mercy, have mercy. Ki anu ein lanu hasaga. We have no idea. Bay, what God is, be, which is not like the soul before it came into the body. We don't know what reality is now. There's no thought that can grasp God at all. Therefore, we have no idea how great the mercy is on us. But God, who am mother? God is the knower. He's the knowledge. He's the He's the knowledge. He's the knower. Mahuto vatsmuto, God's essence and His being. The Yakra Tiferet Gedulaso and the preciousness of God's glorious splendor, Asher Kula Kameh, that in front of God everything is like nothing. Rachem Aleinu, you should have mercy on us. Elohim, it begins Tiferet, from this level of Tiferet, Shalomayel and Nimshach Rachmanus is drawn the mercy. I, I have to say, I mean, yesterday I said it, I think it got locked, locked out, it got erased yesterday. But I saw on a video, I've said it before, but I'll say it again because it's very worthwhile. Some black guy was uh, brought into court for robbery, robbery, assault and robbery, whatever it is, and possession of drugs. I don't remember any, you know, really sort of uh, the, the disgusting low crimes. And the judge says, you know, she looks at him, she says, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Barnes, you're accused of uh, assault and battery and and thievery and, and selling drugs and things like that. So Mr. Barnes, do you recognize me? And he looks up at the judge. And he all of a sudden he starts to cry. He said, oh, no, no, no. And she says, we learned in school together. You were one of the best pupils. I really liked you. We were good friends. Don't you remember me? And he's just moaning and crying. Oh, no, 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 no. I said, what have you done? What have you done with yourself? How did you do it? And he can't even talk. 
you know, he's just crying and more. Whoa. She said, listen, I believe in you. I still believe in you. You have tremendous potential. You could be a, a tremendously good influence on the world. What have you done? He's just weeping and wailing over there in the corner. It was really very, you know, uh, you know, heartbreaking. It's the same thing over here. <clears throat> God is saying to us, what have you done? You're a Jewish person. You came from my essence. You're the sons of God, every Jew. What are you doing? How did you fall down so low? The problem is, is that we don't feel the judge saying this to us, but the Rebbe is saying this to us. The Rebbe is the Moses of the generation. We said, just like Moses, he brings down our awareness of God to us. <clears throat> and he brings it from above to below. Is that's what the Rebbe is doing to us? Think about it for a second. You knew where you came from. No, I don't know where I came from. Well, learn a little bit of Hasidut. You'll have a little bit of an idea <clears throat> where you came from, <clears throat> what you should think about every time you say Kriya Shema. That's what means going, making these 42 journeys in the desert to refine the desert. Namely, we're in this world, that's the desert, and the journeys we take are fixing up our emotions, coming to love, God, fear, God, have mercy, requesting mercy from God, realizing how great our how great we need God's mercy. Calls all this is in Kriya Shema, Shemitbon, and we think about God's upper unity, but what about after you finish praying? We can't think about this. You can't pray the whole day. Like the rabbis say, it should only be a person should pray all the day. So what are we supposed to do for the rest of the day? Now we have the lower three aspects Emotions, Netzach, Hod, and Yisod. We talked about Chesed, Gavur, Tiferet, love, fear, and mercy. What about the rest of the day? Netzach. Netzach means victory. This is what's called a concealed love. Shebakal Nefesh, which is inside of the soul of every Jew. But told also naturally, like we said before, that Jacob is the rope of God's inheritance. That's not exactly the interpretation, but that's what the words mean here. Hevel, just like a rope that goes from the highest level to the bottom, to the lowest, therefore therefore we have a tremendous love for God, but Tivam in their nature. And therefore, therefore the Jewish people are called a stiff-necked people. What does it mean, stiff-necked people? <clears throat> when they pray, they make up their mind that they are going to love God, they're going to fear God, they're going to have request God's mercy. They know how far away they are from God. And then when they finish prayer, so they don't have this emotion and this direct connection with God. They have a direct connection with the world. So how? what do you do then? God, The main thing, God wants us to think about him and to love him and to fear him and to realize that we need his mercy in the rest of the day, not just when we're praying. So how do we do it? So that, and this is, is that the Jewish people are a stiff-necked people. Once they make a resolution that they are going to love God and they are going to fear God, that even if that reason is not in front of them, stiff neck. What does it mean, stiff neck? Stiff means, means <clears throat> you're stubborn to do something in the face of opposition. It's, it's not so much of a trick to come to love God when you're thinking about him and you're in synagogue and there's no problems. But when you're in your work and you have to think about your job, you have to be, you have to be a good worker. And you have to be honest in business and you have to provide what the customer wants or the, what, the, what the boss wants or whatever. So you have to think about that. But what about thinking about God all day? So it says, on this it says we have to be stubborn. Stubborn means <clears throat> that no matter what happens, we say, listen, I am going to serve God. Right? You have a big chance to, to lie and to make a lot of money. A lot of money. You really need that money. I'm stubborn. The world is not going to conquer my love for God. Lohi, and therefore, my love for money is not... Lohi, and therefore, the rabbi said, there's three things which are, I'd say, strong, uh, defiant in the world. <clears throat> One of them is Yisrael Be'umot. I think, what, a rooster among the birds? I think, I have to look over there. <clears throat> the, and the, among the nations, the Jews. The Jews, it says, are the most defiant nature nation of all. 
she'im betivam, they are by their nature, they are azim. They are defiant by chazakim and strong by midas and nitzuach, victory. What does it mean, victory? La'ava et Hashem to love God. A lot of times people say, the thing I like about Chabad is that you fellows, you're not fanatics. And I always say that is totally not so. We are definitely fanatics. We're fanatics to love every Jew. We're fanatics to love God. We're fanatics to love the, the, God, God, the Torah and to do what God's creation, the way he wants. We're fanatics for all those things. That's called, st- uh, uh, how do you say, stiff-necked. stiff-necked. We're stiff-necked to do the, what's right. <clears throat> Therefore, it says we should love God. You can love God despite all of the distractions of the world with a tremendous love of Belishim is bonus without thinking about it at all. This is like halacha pasuka. There's a, a law which is decided. Adin Belishum Tam Pesvora. Right? A Jew is not supposed to eat not kosher food. So before he eats any food, my wife used to have a big advertising agency. And one of the main things, if you want to advertise food, you have to advertise in big, clear letters who gives the heksher, who gives the, how do you say, the, 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 the kosher sign on it. You know, which group is there? Because there's a lot of groups, and some of them are not so careful, and some of them are careful. In any case, the, 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 very, very important. So it, a, a Jew looks and he sees, this is food I really want. He's on a plane. He hasn't eaten. The plane got, got delayed. He hasn't eaten for two days. Right, and he's really, really hungry. And they bring the food, and it says kosher according to the what the the, the rabbinut of uh, you know the, the 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 chief rabbi of who knows of where of uh, Iran, Iraq or something. I said, what? There's no rabbi over there. What are you talking about? Who's the rabbi? Rabbi McGregor, he's the rabbi. What? Well, this is not it. This is what type of a thing is this? It's a reform rabbi. No, no, no I'm not going to eat it. But you said you were hungry. No, 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 no. That's not. Why not? It's food. It's it, it's in chicken. It's not pig. So there's a law that says that you can only eat food that was slaughtered properly and prepared properly. If it's meat, you know, you have a banana, I'll eat a banana. Then if there's a banana that's kosher from outside of Israel, that's kosher with the, the reform, I'll eat it, no problem. Even if it's kosher from the, the church, I'll eat it. A banana, what's the problem? That I'll eat. But sir, you've been eating bananas, right? That you haven't eaten for three days, you only eat bananas. That's that's all. I'm not, I'm a, it's a halacha pasuka. If it's a decided law, then he's not asking. There's no questions. There's no, you, you can't not. There's nothing to argue about. But it looks like any other type of meat. It, it's got a sign on it. Okay, so it's it's, a, it's not a kosher. It's not an orthodox sign. Is it? That's it. No. To him, it's the same thing as eating pork. Not going to do it. He says that's because the Jewish people are a stiff-necked people. That's the nature of the Jews. As we'll talk about more. God willing, tomorrow. <clears throat> that, that's all what's called Netzach. Why, why are we talking about that? Because we're talking about fixing up our six emotions. That's loving God, fearing God, realizing the necessity for God's mercy. And now we're saying, what happens when you, that's when you're praying and you're thinking about God. What happens when you go into the world? You have to deal with the world. It says then all we have is our power of resolution, our firm resolution, our power, power of defiance, that I am going, I remember when I was praying, I really felt God. I know God exists. Now I'm in the world that doesn't seem that God does exist. Or if he does, he's very far away. It's not so. It's a lie. God is close. I don't feel it. But I'm acting that way. I know that that's what it is. Defiance. Loyalty. To the creator. Without any logic behind it whatsoever. We'll talk about this more God willing tomorrow. Now let us do... Yes. Uh-huh.